what we're going to do is we're going to buy the August expiration, uh, which we're looking at. It's got 72 days left, uh, the 62 and a half call, and we're looking at a purchase price of $4, okay, which is an implied vol of around 34.61, which is uh, a little bit lower than the uh, implied overall at the money calls of the stock itself options, and obviously a little lower than uh, Fari's uh, Univol. And we're going to sell uh, 10 of the July 60 calls. So the diagonal spread is a July August, which represents the horizontal, meaning the time spread as far as the expiries. And the uh, vertical is the fact that we're selling the July 60 and buying the 62 and a half. And when you look at your uh, relationships of your uh, theta, you can see up here in the red that the uh, theta to the July 60 call is a 0 .034 with the Vega 0 .07. So we're selling that. So obviously uh, that is money that we're going to collect as time passes. And as we know, that expiry only has 37 days. So the stock is 63, roughly $63. That's a 60 uh, strike call. So there's probably right now about a dollar, dollar and a quarter in time premium there with 37 days left. When we look at our 62 and a half call in August, you can see it has a theta of 0 0.0268, uh, which is a little bit less on a theta basis per day, but you can see that it's holding a Vega 0.1106. So when you look at the uh, net of the two, as far as Vega is concerned, uh, you can see down here the relationship of the fact that we're actually paying to be in this position roughly $39, which is all the way to the far right here on the bottom of the screen. What we're trying to achieve here is we're making a bet that uh, RIG will have that directional move that Fari showed us on the chart uh, to the downside. So what's going to happen as time and movement uh, occurs in our favor, that 60 call in July is going to evaporate more rapidly than the 62 and a half call in August. Two reasons why. One, there's 35 more days in the August expiration, so time is on our side that we're long the one with more life to it. Two, the fact that it's a 60 strike in July means it's carrying a little higher delta of 68, which is up here in red versus the delta of 54 that were long in the 62 and a half August call. So we're roughly in this scenario about 14 deltas, 13 deltas short. So the 60 call in July on the downside is going to collapse a lot faster than the 62 and a half call in August because that August call has more time, it's farther out of the money, so it's going to hold its premium level and basically what will happen is the premium level will expand as the stock goes down because of the fact that it's going to hold whereas the July 60 is going to collapse. So let's take a look at what this is going to look, out, look like when we chart this position up. When you look at the position here, you could see exactly that. Okay, uh, We're looking at the position at roughly 63, which is right here, uh, which is the green line represents at expiry. A okay? uh, little bit over to the left would be, okay. so you can see at expiry right about here, uh, we're going to be a small loser, and this green line represents at expiry what's going to happen. Well, here's our downside move. Uh, obviously, we want the stock to get to uh, our highest opportunity for this 10 lot trade is going to be right at 60, as you can see, right? Correct? Does that make sense? The reason why it makes sense is we're short that July 60 call. Obviously, at July expiration at 60, it's worth zero, and our August call is going to maintain its value, which is giving us the peak in this chart. That's where we're going to make our most money. Now, obviously, as the stock continues to go south in this scenario, we start to lose what? We start to lose our August value because we already lost and gained in profit all the July 60 call. Now what's happening here is we're losing some of our profit that we made in the August call because it's the only thing that has any value left. Now, you can see the blue line, which is a daily chart of what's happening in this position. So you can see it's slightly bearish. And as time goes by and the stock goes down, we're going to have a positive p &L. So you can see in this strategy, it's a slightly bearish position that's possibly pinpointing uh, a, a possible direction or strike of where you think the stock's going. Now, as Fari indicated, he discussed with us that he thought the stock had a shot to go to 57. 
So you might want to look at possibly looking at the 5760 as being a very good position to create in a diagonal like this because what you can accomplish by that is pinpointing the 57 and a half strike as a strike that's going to evaporate to zero while the 60 call will maintain its position. So what we could do is we could look, let's take a look at that and see if we can create that position uh, since that was the area that we were looking uh, to be able to create uh, a position. So let's see if I did that right. Uh, selling the 57 and a half, yep, here we go. We got that one, so let's chart this position and see what this position looks like. So as you can see, it's almost identical in its nature in the way it, it looks. The only thing has, that's happened that's changed is we've moved our downside target to around the strike of the uh, 57F call in July. So you can see we're short the 57F call in this strategy and long the August 60. Okay, so we're short the 50, 60 call, uh, long the 60 call in August, short the 57F in July. So you can see our maximum potential profit will be at July expiry at 57 and a half. So that's how you would pinpoint a diagonal spread when you're looking at a specific price that you think the stock is going to go to over a period of time. And obviously you're putting the strategy on based upon the time frame you think that this stock can make this move to that position in the stock.